Tip In Maple Leafs podcast is brought to you by TipInSportsMedia.com. That's TipInSportsMedia.com. Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. On today's podcast, we're going to take a look at the 2021 Maple Leaf season that's coming up. Going to start soon. You're so excited. Oh, man, I can't wait. It's been a long time. Been a long time. We're also I'm gonna... so excited. <laughs> I'm so scared. We're also going to take a look at the schedule because it is fucking batshit crazy. Um, we're going to look at who's going to make the Leafs team out of camp. Who will be on the taxi squad? We're going to make our predictions for who's going to come out of each of these new divisions to the final four. And to finish off the, uh, we're also going to do line predictions, maybe. And to finish this off, we're going to make our top five leaf predictions for the 2021 season. Happy Happy New Year, Year, listeners. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year's. We're coming to you right after Canada just beat the Czech Republic to move on to the quarters or the semis 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 coming up tomorrow. That's what she said, right? Yep. Yep. Semis coming tomorrow. Got a semi tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. It's not coming tomorrow. It's coming later in the week. The semi is coming later in the week. Right. Well, the tournament, when does the tournament end? I don't know. I think they don't, they're not going to go back to back tomorrow. It'll probably be on Monday. And then the gold, gold is on Wednesday or whatever. But so the States play lat, no, Slovakia tonight, I think, at 10.30. And the winner of that game, depending if the States win that game, Canada will play Russia in the semis. But let's get into it. It's the a training 2021. Camp, training camp eve right now. Boom. Training camp eve. Training camp starts tomorrow. The Leafs will kick off their 2021 season. Tomorrow. How many are they bringing to camp? There's 35 for, like players right. and six goalies. Okay. That's it. So you're looking at 41 players total, 19 forwards, I think, and 16 defensemen. That's not that many guys. There's a lot of dudes that they lent to like some of the European teams or whatever for the season. Like Korshkov is not coming. He's not invited. Yeah, he's over in the KHL. Which I kind of find a little weird, but like, I don't know. Maybe they just would rather have him play the whole season. Well, and there's also not a lot of room on this roster. Okay, let's move on, move on and take a look at the schedule because it is insane. They are basically playing three out of four nights all the time. Yeah. Like, it is insane the amount of games they're cramming in. And we were talking about this. It probably has a lot to do with the fact that they're not traveling as much. Oh, without a doubt, because that makes so much sense, right? Like, they'll just, like, I have it in front of me right now. Just I'll just go through the month of... January, which basically is just two weeks, the, f- yeah. the first two weeks of the season, the 13th, the 15th, the 16th, first three games, the 18th, 20th, 22nd, 24, 26, 28, 30. Yeah. So they're playing their first three games in four nights, and then they're playing every other day or every other night for the rest of the month but those and, games and the first one is in toronto against montreal then yeah. they go to ottawa for two that's right and then they're back home in toronto for three mm-hmm. and then they go and they winnipeg edmonton edmonton yep and then they go out west they play edmonton four times in january Did i know. You know that yeah they go out west and they play calgary in calgary twice so they play the 24th and the 26th but they don't leave calgary for three days that's right. And then yeah, they go so, to Edmonton and they do the same thing. They play the 28th and the 30th against the Oilers in Edmonton, but they're basically in Edmonton for days. Right. And then they come back to Toronto and it's the same thing. It is for the most part. And then so going into February, so after they do the, you know, after January 30th, which is their last game in Edmonton, they come yeah. back home. They get a four, they get a three day break. So they'll have the first off, the second and the third, and then they play starting on the fourth. Vancouver Canucks come in beginning of February the 4th, the 6th, and the 8th. 
So three straight games against the Canucks at home. So like the max, I look through this whole thing, the maximum I've seen them have off is three or four days at a time maximum. And it's only like, if they're coming out, if they're coming back from like out or whatever, like when they come not, back from out West, they get a small break, a couple, couple days off, a couple yeah. days off. And that's it. it, it yeah. yeah, it is crazy. But if you're going to squeeze 56 games in to that tight of a schedule, that's what she said. Yes. That's how you got to do it. That's how you got to do it. And I don't like, I think it's going to be great because we're just going to, we're going to go from like zero to a hundred and it's going to be incredible. Like, yeah, I was thinking about this today. They're just going to be playing all the time. It's going to be like, but there's going to be, there's going to be no time to think about the last game because you've got another game tomorrow. And because you're playing the same team so much, like, do you think winning streaks and losing streaks won't, won't really be, there won't be big winning streaks or big losing streaks? I don't know, man. It's hard to say. It's hard to say, but because I'll tell like, you this. If, you, if you're playing, let's say you're playing, I don't know, you're playing Edmonton, what they play Edmonton four times in, in the first two in weeks, the span of two weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. So say they beat them the first two times, then they go into Calgary. I don't know. I just don't see it where you can face a team that many times and beat them every time. You so like, yeah, I, I don't see like yeah. a, a twelve game winning streak happening in this league because it's like the playoffs. That's you know? right. Yeah, you're right. You would have to sweep all these series. And I just don't see it happening. It's one thing when you, you know, you play Detroit and then you play Ottawa and then you go and you knock one out here and you knock one out there. Yeah, that's what she said. But you're right. You're right, though, because it's it's going to be weird, even though it's spread out a bit like they're not like the two games here. And then like they play Edmonton on the on the 20th and the 22nd, and then they play them again on the 28th and the 30th. So there is a break in between where they play Calgary like Edmonton Edmonton Calgary Calgary Edmonton Edmonton like those are one two three four five like six games in a row for the Leafs yeah where they don't really leave the general area that they're no in. no for sure so like that would that's great like travel yeah. wise they're there for like fucking basically after so the games first are four really, games really going... tight together and, and really crammed in but the travel has been just dissipated like it's like nothing this year yeah, it'll you be basically great. travel to a city and then you stay there. But there, and we'll get into this later, like in the East Division, whatever. Like they're not traveling. They're all those teams are playing in the same time zone for fucking the next six months. They're not even leaving. At least like the Canadian Division, they're hitting three di- or th- three different time zones. Yeah. So like, yeah. If you're just if you're like in the, I'm uh, pretty sure that's the only division that's doing that. Yeah. If you're in the Boston Buffalo Division. It's all east, your it's travel all is like an hour flight tops anywhere. Yeah, but it, you're not it's all eastern. Like, it's all eastern time. It's all eastern time. So there'll be no like you're not taking a western trip where you're playing at ten thirty or whatever. So, and they haven't even said like what time the games will be. Like if if the Leafs are playing at Edmonton on Saturday, is the game going to be at like local time five or local time yeah. four? Like I don't know. <laughs> it's like so weird. If you if you scan through the schedule, it's just so weird to see. Like the same teams over and over. It's awesome. Like I you love see it. so many Euler symbols, so many flame symbols, so many senator symbols, so many Canadian symbols. I think it's good. I'm excited to to watch it. Oh, are you kidding me? It's gonna be I've never been more excited for a hockey season in my life. Not just because of the caliber of the team that I think the Leafs are gonna put on the ice, but just to see something that we've never seen and never will see again. Or will we? You imagine yeah. this with fans? No, I'm not even just talking the the Canadian thing. Like the hockey will be better, the players will be better because they'll be less uh, taxed by the traveling. And dude, you, Pittsburgh playing Washington nine times, Washington or the Flyers playing the uh, Bruins or whatever like nine times. Right, but we haven't we haven't seen it play out yet. Like, no, I know, it but it sounds it's be, amazing. I don't see how it can. Excited. But it may get to a point, and it's also 56 games, which honestly is better because you're not going to have that lull in the season. There's always that January, February, yeah. where even, yeah. even fans check out a little bit. It's just going to be hitting you in the face left and right. Yeah, that's what she said. So, yeah, that's the, that's the schedule. It is crazy, but it's 56 games. It's in your face. It's coming at you hard. Be ready. Be prepared. There's no, there's no room for like you got to come out of the gates 
flying. You can't go off. You can't go like zero and eight to start. You're done. Probably yeah, right you're away. Done. In a fifty-six so, game season, yeah. If you miss out on sixteen points, you're done. If you can bank like twenty points, like sooner than later, you're going to be in real good shape. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, the schedule. It looks exciting to me. I really think it's going to be like just it's going to be crazy just how frequently they're playing. It's going to be unlike anything we've seen. I don't even re- remember in the last lockout season. I don't think they played them this hard. No, like, it was it was only I think it was 48 games. And they tra- there was travel and like they did play, everybody played everybody. So it wasn't like a every other day type thing. No, it wasn't like this at all. This is like mini playoff series all the way till the end. Like you're going to Yeah. Yeah, if there's seven teams incredible. in your division, you you have six teams that you were going to play 56 times spread out between those six teams, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is unreal. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. Unreal. Like, I'd like to say I, I give the advantage to the East division, but because of they have by far the least amount of travel, like <laughs> New Jersey, the Islanders, the Rangers, Philly, Pittsburgh, yeah, Washington. They're taking buses Hello. to their games. Yeah, you could if you wanted to. Like, you could sleep at home every night if you fucking wanted to, really. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like to say I, I, would give, I could give the edge to the team who prevails from that division. But I don't know because it's Washington, Pittsburgh, Philly, the Islanders. It's a Boston. tougher division. Yeah, it's tough. To, it's tough. But for the Canadian division, the thing that I love about it is there's always this talk of who's the best Canadian team. Yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to, they're going to play each other over 56 games and we're going to find out just for this season yeah. who actually is. Cause it's always like, yeah. well, Toronto's the best team, but they got yeah. knocked out in the first round. Yeah. 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 Cal- they all- yeah, man. Calgary's better. No, Vancouver's up and rising. You know, yeah. Pedersen, like you have Vancouver fans who are like, Pedersen is better than Matthews. He's just younger and, yeah. and all this stuff. Well, here we go. We're going to find there out. There we go. Who's We're going to lead out. the division in scoring? Who's going to top the division in points? So we'll go here. Um, you have the list in front of you. Who is coming to training camp tomorrow? Okay. So there's 35 players that are invited, and there's six goalies. The goalies, Anderson, Campbell, Aaron Dell, Ian Scott, Joseph Wall, Michael Hutchinson. Okay. We all know how that's going to play out. So 35 players start with the D Callie Rosen, David Worsofsky. Okay. Jake Muzzin, Joey Duzak, Justin Hall, Christians Rubens an S on his first name and an S on his last name. I like that name. Mac Hollowell, Marty Morentz, <laughs> Miko Lettinen, Morgan Riley, Rasmus Sandin, TJ Brody, Timo Kivalaime, something like that. I think that was pretty decent. Timothy Lilligren, Dermot Bogosian. The forward group, Brooks, Adam Brooks, Alexander Barabanov, Alexander Kerfoot, Austin Matthews, Mr. Mustache himself, Ilya Mikheyev, Jason Spezza, Jimmy VC, Joe Thornton, Joey Anderson, Johnny Toronto, Kenny Augustino, Mitch Marner, Nick Patan, Nick Robertson, Pierre Engvall, Travis Boyd, Wayne Simmons, William Nylander, Zach Hyman. So six goalies, 35. Here's how many we're... players on the team? How many will be? Because I know there's okay. been talk about expanding the taxi squad. Okay. What is the, what are the rules? You've got it in front of you. What I've is got it? I've got some information on it, but it's not like set in stone. There's still like it's there's hypotheticals. I've heard some okay. stuff from LeBron and on Twitter and different shit, right? I'm not even on Twitter. I just like check these guys' accounts, whatever. But apparently there's okay, 23 man roster, like normal. Like you dress 20 skaters, or yeah, 20 skaters per game is the maximum you can dress per game. But 20 you're allowed to have 23 guys like make the team out of camp. So that three guys in the press box, you dress 20 every night. They're saying the taxi squad will be four to six players. And that's including one of them has to be a goalie. So that will either leave four. Well, it's four to six players. So if it ends up being four, then you've got three players and one goalie. If it ends up, you know, you can do the math on that. I don't think it'll end up being four. I think it'll end up being higher. It'll be five or six on the taxi squad. That's what I think. But if it is, if it is four, then that ends up being 27 players total, including the 23 man roster. And if it's, 
five, then it's 28. And if it's, they allow it to six, then that's 29. So we're not getting over 29, like the maximum guys that can be on this team or play for the least this season will be 29. Could be twenty eight, could be twenty seven, but I think the, maybe they'll go in the middle. Like it, maybe it'll be twenty eight. But with the with the schedule, of how crazy it, it is, like we talked about, it might be a good idea to use the full taxi squad and actually play those guys. Here, okay. Here's what I don't know. Here's what I don't know. Your twenty three man roster, and then let's say you've got six guys on the on the taxi squad. Are you allowed to interchange anytime you want? Can you pull someone like say there's no injuries and just whatever say Wednesday night against yeah, whatever I, I would think so in a 56 game season when you're playing so much why can't you play Joe Thornton on Monday take him out put someone else in on Wednesday okay. so so ta- on Wednesday so the taxi squad is basically like they're not just there as reserves like if you want to sit Spezza on Wednesday and yeah, not it, have him play three games this week you just, can put you can put Engvall in and it's all good yeah, they're just healthy scratches. Okay, but so do you know sudden, that for sure? Is that like... I would assume that you would do something. Like, if you're going to cram so many games in, you have to allow the flexibility to give players rest. Like it, up to the coach. Obviously, the young guys like Matthews and them, they're going to play every day. But, you know, what if Spezza and Thornton rotated? Or what if you played Nick Robertson a few games and then you played Engvall a few games? Like there's there's tons of different scenarios that could play out here okay here let me let me just read this here okay this is off of nhl.com taxi squad players are permitted to travel with the nhl squad practice with them and join any team activities they are not allowed to practice with any other group besides their nhl team which includes not being allowed to practice or join in on any ahl functions which apparently lebron has reported that the ahl is a go and they're going to start on february 5th did you hear that yes so i don't know how they're playing without any fans in the stands i think that's insane but anyway and then it goes on to say players can be recalled to the nhl squad this is i'm talking about the taxi squad players can be recalled to the nhl squad on any day but must be done before 5 p.m. Eastern to play in that night's game. Okay, that's goal, easy goal, then. Goaltenders can be recalled at any time if a team like So needs. it's basically reserves that can be used. So the coach just has to make up his mind before 5 p.m. Yeah. So that's, that's incredible. Not, that I think that's incredible then. That gives yeah, that you, that got, 20, you got 28 or 29 dudes every day to choose from. Well, and there's going to be injuries and shit like that. Of but course, of course. You're going to be able to give guys rest. And that's but, huge when you're cramming that many games in. Do you, but do you have a list of like who, who, if you're 28 guys, go. My 28 guys? Mm-hmm. Okay, so for my goaltenders, obviously, Anderson Campbell, Dell. Yeah, for sure. Defense, Riley. Yeah. Brody. Yeah. Muzzin. Okay, same. Paul, I'm with you so far. 100%. Paul, yeah. Dermot, Bogosian. Spares, Sandine, Lilligren, Letnin. Okay. That's not my top six, but I'm with you on having all those guys like in the mix of the top 28. Uh, forwards. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you before you go to the forwards, I'll you, just, I, 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 I named you, every single guy that you named defensive. And I also, if they want to go further, I, I'm going Mac Hollowell because Mac Hollowell. Yeah. He was, and, and they could go Timo Kibalimi or like somebody with more experience or, Maybe even Callie Rosen, they could do that too. But for me, Lilligren and Mac Hollowell, especially like I think they've got Hollowell's a right handed D. He was like, I think either runner up or one best defenseman in the OHL two years ago. I think he's a guy they've got, they see on this team. So in, with, a, nor- in a normal year, you would want those guys playing with the Marlies and getting as much without a time as possible. Without a doubt. But in a season like this, you may be like, and that might happen anyway. It still could out. happen. Could, it's still and might, and that, those that might, might be the guys that practice with the coach. But here, well, here's what I'm saying. Like a guy like, yeah, I guess the taxi squad squad will be the fuck, taxi man. squad. K- and the backup and third Keith's going to be a, Keith's going to be a busy boy. Yeah. Cause he'll be back at the fucking practice center with a taxi squad, probably like on not game days. But anyway, like for me, here's my reasoning behind Lilligren and Mac Hollow. I, I had, guys, I had Lilligren as well. 
Two two guys like that specifically. But that, I didn't have. I had Lilligren and Sandine as like the next two on the list. Oh yeah, yeah. Like need like they don't see ice time other than Sandine. Sandine's first in for me. I think yeah. if there's injuries. Let's go on to the forwards. Let's go to the forwards. You go ahead and. So do you want me to name like fifteen forwards? Well, not necessarily. Like okay. Well, let me give you my list. So Nylander, Matthews, Marner. Yeah. Hyman, Tavares. Soup. Yep. McCabe. Um Thornton. Kerfoot. Spezza. Yep. Vessi. Yep. Uh, then I had Joey Anderson. Uh Simmons. Uh and then for spares I had uh Nick Patan, Nick Robertson, and Pierre Engvall. <coughs> really? Yeah. Here's my forward. Here's my forward group that I think would make it. Okay, I'm gonna give you 14 guys. Okay, well, actually, let's be real here. Outside of like the top guys, we've got Adam Brooks, yeah. Barabanov. Ba- oh, who Barabanov, I think, who I yeah. think makes who I think makes it. But let's just say Brooks, Barabanov, VC, like bubble guys. Brooks, Barabanov, VC, Augustino, Patan. Patan. Yeah, Patan. Robertson, Engvall, Boyd. You got eight guys right there. Three of those guys make it. For me, it's Robertson, it's Engvall, and it's VC. No, no, sorry. Bear Banoff. I don't know. Four of them. If they do you go think up Bear to... Banoff will be in the opening night roster? I do, yeah. Personally, I think so, yeah. Hmm. I don't, don't think maybe I, so? well, I've I never seen I've never seen him play, but I didn't see McKayev play either. And now that I have, I'm like, well, this guy's in the lineup. Yeah, now it's a no-brainer. He, not only is he in the lineup, he's playing with John Tavares. I think, I think Bar- well, I'm going to – I don't think that's going to happen this year, in my personal opinion. But Barabanov is supposed to be, like, better defensively. He, I don't think they're bringing him in to shoot the fucking lights out. I think they're bringing him in as more of, like, a, dare I say, Leo Komarov style. Like, better in his own end, a little grittier, do some – penalty killing like that's where i see and they don't if you look up and down that lineup they don't have nearly enough of that so i think barabanov barabanov whatever his name is all right i think he makes it adam brooks there's another guy you want depth center like is that a guy you want to like i don't think he's on an entry level so they got they got decisions to make here but at the same time teams that are tight up against somebody's got to play on the marlies it, well, it, well, exactly. But teams that are tied up against it, do you want, like, if Adam Brooks is on waivers or if Jody Anderson's on waivers, like, are they going to snag? Like, is a team going to come in and snag one of those guys anyway? Probably not, really. I mean, no. really. And everybody's going to have stuff, like, people on waivers with these taxi squads. Yeah, for sure. So it's not like every player is going to get claimed left, right, and center. No, 100%. 100%. Okay, so the AHL is apparently happening. So I guess all the rest of the guys are just like getting sent to the A if they clear waivers, which is fine. A lot of the guys they didn't even invite to camp. Like there's only 35 guys they invited, like I said, minus the goalies. Yeah. So anyway, the AHL is happening. I already mentioned that. LeBron said that February 5th. We'll see. I mean, we'll tentatively, they fucking, we'll see what happens there. Uh, okay, so do you want to take a quick break? We'll come back. We'll talk about li- our line combinations, division predictions, and our top five 2021 specific Maple Leafs predictions. All that and more on the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Roger Horton, here to talk about Horton Pharmaceuticals' new compressed powder capsule for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, which is... Fancy doctor talk for when your penis doesn't harden, even though you went to a lot of effort to try and get it to. Sildenafil was invented to treat heart problems, but scientists quickly realized it had the unexpected side effect of creating almost unstoppable erections. So now we sell it exclusively for that purpose. Its effects on the heart remain a mystery, but most men prefer them to not having erections at all. I'm Roger, by the way. And I endorse, but do not personally need this product. Okay, so we're back. And now we're going to do our line predictions for opening night. The opening night roster of the 2021 Toronto Maple Leafs season in the All-Canada Division. The North, baby. The lights are down. The fans are at home. 
the players take the ice. Let's do this. So, yeah, like excluding like, okay, the expanded roster with the taxi squad and whatever, just who we think will be in the lineup on opening night. Yeah, no taxi squad, guys on the ice. Yeah. But including guys that might make the taxi squad out of camp, but ultimately be in the lineup on opening night. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying here. Okay. Do you want to start? Sure. Or do, or do you want do you, do you want to go ahead? Go ahead. All right. Here's what so, I got. Are, you, are you are we going full line combinations here? Full line combinations. Like so, not just who the play like who is making it and who well, they're playing with. Forwards, defense, goalies. But combinations like who like what you think the top line will be? Second line, third line, fourth line. Are we doing that? Yes. Okay, let's do that because that's All what right. I got. That's what I got. Top line will yeah. be Awesome Matthews, Mitchell Marner, Zach Hyman. Okay. Second line will be John Tavares, Ilya Mikheyev, William Nylander. Third okay. line will be Joe Thornton at center, Kerfoot on wing, and Wayne Simmons on the other wing. Fourth line will be Spezza with Jimmy Vesey and Joey Anderson. Interesting. That is what I think will be the opening night forward lineup. You okay? Run it, run it. No, run it through, and then I'll and then I'll do my whole. Thing. Okay, R- go to the day. defense. I think Riley and Brody will play together. Muzzin Hall, Dermot Bogosian. Okay, and then Fred and and Anderson and will Campbell. start, and that Campbell will be back up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm with you on That's the goalies. That's what I. So think. I'm. Well, the I'm, goalies pretty easy. My forward lines look a lot different than yours. To well, be let's honest. let's hear it. Let's hear my, it. My my D looks very similar, but uh, that's what she said. But I think on the forward group, I, here's what I would like to see. Whether or not this happens, I don't know. But this is what I would personally like to see. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Top Go. line. Top line. Yeah. Matthews, Nylander, Joe Thornton. Whoa. Joe plays the wing, baby. My oh. reasoning behind this is because Joe's probably not going to get you a ton of goals, but great playmaker. So who better to play with than would you rather have Joe playing with Kerfoot and somebody else on the third line, or would you rather have Joe getting Austin and Willie the puck? Yeah, but can Joe handle the minutes? Great question. Maybe he doesn't stay there the entire season, and I'll, I'll get to that. But this is how I would start it. This Plays is how I would st- Just starting the night. This is how I would start at opening night, okay? All Matthews, right. Nylander, Thornton. My second line would be Tavares between Hyman and Marner. I'm putting Mitch back with JT because, again, you got a grinder in Hyman. You got two... Two Mar- seasons. Marner made JT a 50 goal score. Exactly. So why not go back to that? Austin will get the goals no matter who he's fucking playing with. He doesn't need Mitch, in my opinion. No, I he think, doesn't need Mitch. I, I think JT, I think Mitch is better served to be the setup guy for Tavares. And then you got two lines. So again, Matthews, Nylander, Thornton, Tavares, Marner, Hyman. Those are wow. my top two lines. Those are my top two lines. My third line would look like this. I, actually, my third and fourth line would be like interchangeable, but let's just whatever. Like one okay. of these could be third, one of them could be fourth. But here's who I have on the third and the fourth line. Let's go. Let's just say third line. Kerfoot between Mikhaev and Barabanov. Two Russians. Two Russians who can communicate out there. You're not liking that one? You're not liking no, that one? Not one, liking that one. What aren't you liking about that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the thing I don't like about it is. With so many good centers on the team, why is Kerfoot at center? Okay, well, my fourth line. Okay, so that could be the fourth line. Well, he's a natural center. Yeah, but when you have Joe Thornton to take draws, why? Who, why? who did who did who did you have on the third line with Thornton? Simmons and Kerfoot. I would throw Kerfoot to the wing. Okay, well, you could have Joe come out for the draws and like, because go to the bench. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, here's just that's I, a lot of work, though. 
well, they were kind of okay, doing I, that I'm last sorry, year. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, it's okay. So Kurt, this is just what I was thinking. I'm, I, w- I want to see a different look. because so you got like a, the Oreo line, but with Russians on the wing. 100%. Kerfoot between Mikhaev and Barabana for their third line. Like, I didn't love M- uh, Mikhaev with, like, playing with JT and, and Nylander. Like, he didn't – he great in the bubble, apparently, like, before they got to the actual games. And then he kind of, like, hid – he was invisible when they were playing at Columbus. So anyway, whatever. And then my fourth line or slash interchangeable third line would be Spezza between Simmons and Robertson. And again, my so Robertson on the opening night roster, a hundred percent. And w- with that, like, so I'm leaving off Engvall. I'm leaving out the v- uh, VC and, and guys like that taxi squad all day long. I think those two and some others, but um, Spezza veteran Simmons veteran, Playing with the rookie, Robertson, that's my kind of whole deal between like why I think that line makes a lot of sense. And Kerfoot, veteran, eh, I don't know if I'd go that far, but he's been around a bit. McKayef, it'll be his second time to the dance, and Bear Banoff, a rookie. So any six of those guys, you could see maybe change, whatever. And just because I, I've got Spezza with Roberts, Robertson and Simmons to start, I just think it would be – okay. Robertson is a smaller dude. He's skilled. So he want like to give him some space. Like I think him and if him and Spezza could find chemistry together, you put Simmons on the other wing that like no one's going to touch Robertson because Simmons is on the fucking ice with him. That's true. That's these are, these are my reasonings behind like why I'm going with that. It does give some space to Robertson to have Simmons. No no one's going to touch him. If Simmons is out there, it's not going to happen. I actually, I'll disagree with you on the fact that I thought Nylander and Tavares did have chemistry. And I think Mitch and Matthews are good, but I get it. M- Mitch made JT a 50 goal scorer and JT played his best hockey in Toronto when he had Marner on his wing. So it yes, does, that's... it does make sense to give him Marner, but. Okay. You know. So those anyway, like, am I expecting to see that? Probably not, but that's just kind of like, I thought about it and I'm like, this is a different, this is a different look. Well, you never know with Keith. And, and listen, like I you said, never know. Thornton, Thornton starts with Nylander and Matthews, but yeah. maybe he slips and plays with whatever. Maybe Robertson moves up. Maybe Simmons moves up. Maybe they, whatever, like who knows? Who knows? Anyway, my six D Riley plays with Brody without a doubt. Muzzin Hall. My third pairing would be Bogosian and Lettinen. I think Lettinen plays. I think Lettinen plays. That's my opinion. My next guy's up would be I don't think he, I don't think he plays on opening night. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I think Lettinen plays with Bogosian opening night. Could be wrong. It could be Dermot and fucking Sandine. Who the fuck knows? Probably not. They're playing Montreal. I'm sure Bogosian's going to play. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Bogosian plays opening night. Who his partner will be, we'll see. But anyway, that's... It, it might be at. a little bit of playing the the new signings because the fans want to see them too, right? True. The like fans probably want to see Bogosian in the lineup. Whether sure. he plays every night, they're probably going to want to see him. That's why I thought probably Vessi gets a shot on opening night, whether it's on the fourth line or not. Yeah. Like I don't see – I just – personally, I don't see Vessi or VC beating Robertson out of a spot in training camp. I just personally don't see it. I could I, be wrong. I don't, but- I don't want to see it. But I just, I don't know. The NHL always kind of leans that way, where the guy who's played before, the guy well, who scored twenty sh- goals in the I, NHL I hear you, before, but they shouldn't be thinking that. This I don't team- think they should think that either. But on opening night, they probably do that, and then all of a sudden, ten games in, Robertson's playing every night. Okay, possibly, possibly. Yeah, okay, maybe. So, or if you're Mike Babcock, no. <laughs> You say to yourself, well, we're playing the Ottawa Senators and Jason Spetz has spent a lot of time there and he's been a class act his entire NHL career. And now he's signed for Toronto for league minimum. He's a healthy scratch. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But uh, <laughs> thank thank goodness. But I, I just want to say this too. About we we talked about that the other night. Me and Dale were on the phone. We actually rang in the new year together. COVID style. Yeah, COVID style. And... Uh, we talked about just what a sour taste that was to start the 2020 season or the 2019-2020 season. 
Beginning of the end for that. Dickhead. Like the very first game of the year, it just left this sour taste in everybody's mouth. Like just fucking you play Spezza. Nobody says anything. Family nobody, in the family in the stands, all that shit. All right. Just I'll ask a, you right now off the top a, of your head. Such a who's the guy man. that played instead of Spezza? Uh, exactly. No, I do know, but I, can't I know, you it know, but it's not like it was somebody special. No, no, no. That no. Spezza shouldn't have played in that game. No. Just a fucking sour taste and yeah. a shitty year that we're going to flip the page on and start this season. Yeah. Well, he wasn't up to speed on the penalty killing. I think that's what Babcock said. Oh. The guy didn't kill. He wasn't He wasn't a fucking penalty killer. Like, anyway, whatever. But just hitting on the defense quickly before we move on. Riley Brody, Muzzin Hall, Letton, and Bogosian is the six I had. What was the only difference you had? Dermot and Bogosian? Yeah. Okay, our top four are the same there. So with that being said... I think on opening night, Dermot will be ahead of the Okay, Lightning. maybe so. But down down the right side there, you've got Brody, who is a left-hand shot, but is used to playing the right side. Yep. And then you've got a natural right-handed shot in Hall, and you've got a natural right-handed shot in Bogosian. All the other dudes, as far as I'm aware, Dermot, Sandine, Lilligren, the next guy's up, they're all, they're all lefties. So this would be the first time that they could start the season with like three, even though Brody shoots left, He's been playing the right. He's basically entire, right-handed. He's basically right. So they're at, they're slotting guys into natural positions. Like anyway. So yeah. So yeah. Anyway, other than our D pairings being off by one guy, our forward group looks different in what we would do. Yeah. If we yeah. were behind, if we were behind the bench, we would be like, we would have, we would have like serious talks about this <laughs> why i think it should be this way and why you think it should be that way yeah if i was head coach and you were assistant coach well then, you're like i think no. you should put joe thornton on the wing i'd say you fucking crazy man no i'd be like dude he's gonna set up fucking nylander and matthews and like let's give this hey he's guess gonna what? run out of gas by the second period maybe but maybe but like maybe thor like i said maybe thornton starts there maybe by the end of the year robertson is there who knows anyone okay maybe maybe but that is our uh that is our opening night roster prediction so now what we're gonna do we're gonna give you our 21 2021 predictions on who is gonna win each division and wind up in the final four yeah yep. this coming season so we're gonna we're gonna leave the canadian division for last because it'll be a big surprise on who we pick okay I'm winging this. I'm just winging this off of who I think will be good. Like who I think will, well, what else do we have to go off of, of who we think will be good? So do you want to start? Let's go, let's go East, Central, West, North in okay. that order. So from the East out and let's yeah. go the East. So the teams we have in the East are Boston, Buffalo, New Jersey, New York Islanders, New York Rangers, Philadelphia Flyers, Pittsburgh Penguins, Washington Capitals. Yeah. Who comes out of that division on top? That's a it's a tough division. I like we were saying earlier on the podcast, I think that they have the easiest as far as traveling goes. A lot of those teams are really close together. Um, but it could be the most difficult division as far as opponents goes. The Bruins, the Islanders, the Rangers are gonna be better. I don't think the Rangers are going to be ready yet. Um, I don't know. We'll see what their goaltending, how that plays out. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington, those three teams I like a lot. Who is playing net for the Washington Capitals? I know they signed Lundqvist, and then he's having the heart issues and whatever. Who? But he wasn't going to be the starter anyway. Who is the net minder in Washington? Samsonov? Sam, is that who it is? Okay. Anyway, I don't think Boston – like losing Chara with Boston, uh, losing Chara to Washington, I I believe Boston will take a step back this season. That's my opinion. Pasternak missed a bunch of games because of injury and surgery, I think, and same with Marchant. So I just don't see Boston there with in this particular division. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington, those are the three teams I would go with. And – I don't know, man. I, I'm not loving the goaltending with Pittsburgh with uh, Tyson Jari. Like he could be great, but is we don't know what he is going to be. Carter Hart in Philadelphia, I think, is like could possibly be the next Carey Price. Although Carey Price hasn't won dick in his career either. Vez, Vezna, a couple of Veznas here and there, but not won the big silver one yet. I'm going with the Caps, man. I think Washington Capitals. 
So the, you have it here, folks. Tales going Washington Capitals, but it's tough because Come I like Philly. Me. I, li- I no, like no, Philly no, and no, I like no. Pittsburgh too. It's tough. You, it's tough. You've, you've made your pick. Caps. 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 I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going out on a limb in all the divisions. Don't I don't say who I think you're going to say. Do you want me to say who I think you're going to say before yeah, you say go, it, so that I can't be like that's who I thought you were. I think you were going to say. Yeah, tell me first, and I'll say, be honest with you. You're going to say the Islanders. Nope. Okay, that's who I thought you were going to say. Nope. Another new, the other New York team? Nope. Okay, then no. The Buffalo Sabres. Oh, get the fuck out of here, man. Come on. Get the fuck out of here. The are Buffalo Sabres. Me? Chad, come on. Are you fucking serious right now? The Buffalo Sabres dude, dude. are going to win the East. Come on. Come on. Are you really? Really? Yeah. yeah. That's the hot take of all fucking hot takes tonight, folks. And I'm saying that because if it happens, I will look like a fucking genius. There's no chance of that happening. And if it chance. doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. The Sabres beat Philadelphia in a seven-game series. The Sabres beat the Capitals in a seven-game series. Come on, man. Come on. The Ove- Buff- Ovechkin and Chara? Like, are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. Hey, now. The Buffalo Sabres, dude. <laughs> are can't, even take win you, can't even take you serious right now. Okay. And Is they- that for real your pick? That is for that is going to be my pick. It was Buffalo it, Sabres win the Eastern Conference. It wasn't going to be my pick for real, but now that you're giving me attitude about it, okay, that is well, my pick for real. Okay, you were joking. I thought you were joking. I'm not joking now. Oh my god, who that is your, my what, pick? What was your real pick going to be? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm picking Buffalo. <laughs> I'm I'm going Buffalo Sabres. Do you want to share your real pick or? Because no. there's no chance that you actually think the Buffalo Sabres are coming out of that division. Well, now I do. You do not. Now I do. You do not. Because you gave Buffalo such a hard time. They're going to be in the fun because they fucking suck. They're going to be in the. <laughs> I don't care if they have Hall and Eichel. Like I don't give a shit about any of that. An, an upcoming uh, defenseman, Dalene, whatever. I don't care. Up against teams like Philly, Pittsburgh, Washington, even the Islanders, the Sabres don't beat any of those teams in a seven game series. So, like, let's be honest. What's your real pick? What's your the, real pick? The Buffalo. Oh, Chad. Are you sticking to that? Seriously? <laughs> I'll stick to it. Let's move on to the Central. We Central. have Carolina, Chicago, Columbus, Dallas, Detroit, Florida, Nashville, Tampa. And let's just make a note that Tampa and Dallas were both in the Stanley Cup final. True that. So Now sorry, they're in just, the same division. Just backtracking for a second. Do you think that it will either be a Washington Buffalo <laughs> East final to go to the final four or a Washington Philly final. Like do you think Washington would be third on your list or no? Well, I think what will happen is Washington will face Buffalo and in, lose in the first <laughs> round and, <laughs> and Buffalo, lose. Buffalo will, will, they won't sweep the caps. They'll beat them in five. Right, and then they'll play Philly, and they'll hammer them too. They'll hammer Philly in five or six games, and then they'll be in the Final Four. Okay. Central, go ahead. I was thinking Sorry. Stanley Cup, but okay, that's, so, that's far-fetched for the Buffalo Sabres. Okay, so you ran, you already ran down the teams in the Central. Yeah, do you want me to go first who I pick in the Central this time? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So um, I actually sat down and thought about this, and my gut wants to say Tampa Bay. But when I got thinking about it a little more, and I was like, go out on a limb with these picks. I think Carolina's going to win this division. Wow. That's a fucking bold statement. Say out of the gates, Sabres and the fucking Hurricanes. <laughs> I've Holy got the Sabres shit. and the Hurricanes in the final four. I have well, maybe the most boring. It is going to be a fucked, up, a fucked up season. So, okay. Okay. That's fair. Um, I don't like all the shit that's going on in in Columbus. Nashville, I think, is kind of like, eh, not really there. For me, it's Dallas or it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. So you could see the Stanley Cup final from last year in the Central Division final or semifinal or whatever they're calling it this year. Tampa, Dallas, hmm. If Ben Bishop is healthy, I don't know. With everything that Tampa's like credentials, they coming off a cup, like they basically kept their same team together. Kucherov injured, 
going to miss the season, but Stamkos will be back. Vasilevsky and Net, which I love. I don't know. Probably going to go with the – it's close for me between Dallas and Tampa, but I think that I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Lightning to win the Central Division. Tampa Bay will do it again. because yeah. Hedman, So you're telling me it's going to be Carolina Hedman, and Buffalo. Hedman, Vasilevsky – a healthy stand coast, even though Kucherov is going to miss. I just, they're very deep at Tampa Bay. And I'm looking at teams in this division like Detroit and Florida. And although Columbus is kind of okay, Chicago is going to be without Taves. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I know. it's Dallas or Tampa, but if I had put, if I was putting cash on it, it's Tampa. All right. Let's move on to the West. We have Anaheim, Arizona, Colorado, Los Angeles. Minnesota, San Jose, St. Louis, and Vegas. This is the toughest one for me to call, I think. This is this is honestly like I looked at this before we started recording. This is the one I actually went back and forth on. Be, I, they're, very, they're very top heavy, like Anaheim, okay, Los but Angeles. I, let's Minnesota. see if you were the same as me. To me, it's Colorado or Vegas in this division. And the way that McKinnon is basically just you taking think, over the, the okay. league. I, right, I don't yeah. love Colorado's goaltending. I don't know if it's Stanley Cup goaltending. Just like I don't know if the Leafs have Stanley Cup goaltending. I know Tampa does. But if I'm going down to it. I went Colorado. It, it, it's Colorado or it's Vegas. For me, I'm, I'm going I'm going Avs. I'm going, I'm yeah. going Avs. I'm going Colorado. Colorado will, will win the West Division. That's my – that's where I'm at. All right. I took – the Minnesota Wild. You just said Colorado. I know, but now I'm changing it. So I got Buffalo, Carolina, Minnesota. No, for real, I got Colorado. They and look like, not they only look do like I have Colorado, ready. I think Nate McKinnon has a monster year. Oh, the guy's just, yeah, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, Nate McKinnon. Yeah, like I think he he overshadows McDavid with the year he's about to have. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, no, that's probably not likely because all of Canada will be focused on the North Division. So, but just maybe, I mean, stats wise, stats wise, possibly. Yeah, yeah I'm, we're gonna be we're gonna get so much Matthews versus McDavid. It's I can't wait. Yeah, I'm sure Bettman just loves the idea of that. Eh? Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the final. The okay, North so sorry. Division. Who did you take? Colorado? Colorado. We both okay, took so we're, Colorado. We're both on Colorado. All right, the final one, the North Division. Oh, Canada. The Canadian Division. We the North. Calgary, Edmonton, Montreal, Ottawa, Vancouver, Winnipeg, and your Toronto Maple Leafs. Do you want me to go? Do you want to go? Look, man. Go ahead. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to win this division. Yeah, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it with, like, I think the Flames are going to be no, good. No, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to win this division. I, I, I feel the same. I feel the same. I, I honestly feel the same. I feel the same. And, and hang on. Did we let, like, listeners know before we started these predictions? Like, are we talking about, like, who finishes first in these divisions? Or no, who, who will be the last team standing in after, the final no, four? After the playoffs, these are our picks to be the final four. So you've got to play your division in the playoffs. So to win your division, technically, it's not just after the regular season ends. If you really want to win your division, you got to come out of it in the playoffs. Yes. And I think when the dust settles, it'll be Toronto, I Colorado, so. Carolina, and Buffalo. Okay. I think when the dust settles, it will be the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Colorado Avalanche, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Washington Capitals. That's where I'm at on that. But I believe risky, once in risky. once, yeah, risky. I know, I know that's super risky. risky. That, I know betting on Tampa and Washington, that's like super. So you super got risky. Thornton playing the wing on the first line on opening night. Hey man, but then you pick Washington and Tampa. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. Okay. Risky. Hey, I'll take it, man. And then maybe we can finally put to bed like the fact that the best team in Canada. Well, we're, we will know once and for all. Who yeah, the best this is team the year. We will is. find out. We will find out who the best team in Canada is. Because we're always talking about it. Bullshit. 56 games, playoffs. Let's see who the best Canadian team is in 2021. We both picked Toronto. We both picked uh, Colorado. I picked Tampa. You picked Carolina. 
I pick Washington. You pick Buffalo. The only really shitty pick there, I think, is the Buffalo Sabres. But that's okay. That's okay. The Buffalo. You watch the Buffalo Sabres will come out of the East, and you'll be like, "Holy fuck, you're a genius, man." Well, if that happens, yeah, yeah I will say that. I will come. You're back. a genius. Yeah, I absolutely will say that, man. hundred percent. Toronto yeah. is going to represent the North. Buffalo is going to represent the. <laughs> Carolina is going to represent the middle or central and um, Colorado. Colorado. Those are Chad's picks and Chad's picks only. I also picked Colorado, Toronto, but I did not pick Carolina. I picked Tampa Bay and I did not pick sure as hell did not pick Buffalo. I picked the Washington Capitals. For all you listeners in Buffalo, I got your back. I don't. I do not like the Sabres. Us and the Sabres. Chad. And the fans in Buffalo, we're going to do this this year. This is our year. Dude. Jack, Jack Eichel is going to rise to the occasion. Yeah, okay. We'll see about that. He's going to grow a little curly fro. Things oh. are going to be good. <laughs> I don't think he needs to. He's already got the curly fro. He's going to grow it bigger. All right. Ready? 2021. These are our predictions of what will happen to the Leafs in 2021. You want to start it? Yeah. going to throw them at you what we think. Yeah, Joe Thornton will publicly call out one of the core players on the Maple Leafs at some point during this season. Whether it's for being lazy, not working hard, but he will publicly call out one of the players. You think that will happen? I think Joe Thornton will, will call out, hey, I've seen Muzzin borderline almost call out players. Borderline. Borderline, where he kind of vaguely mentions that they have to work harder. And you know who he's talking about, but he doesn't say names. I do not agree with that prediction. Do you think he will call out or or make a public statement at some point in the season? Depends, like, how, depends how bad things are going. But do you think he would come out and say, the core of this team has got to act like adults and stop being fucking children? I don't like, know if he would do that publicly. I think he will. I think if things go bad, Joel Thornton's going to do that. Because he's just like, this is my last kick at it, so whatever. Yeah, he doesn't care. Okay. Could happen. Could happen. Okay, that leads into, it could happen. It could happen. I'm not convinced that it will, but it could happen. That will lead into this. For me. 2021 Toronto Maple Leafs predictions. Every one of the core players will all take it to the next level and have career years in the 2021 season, therefore preventing a statement like that being made from Joe Thornton. And these, I hope these bo- that is the, right. These, I these, hope that is the right. The core is ready to take it to the next level. No statement needed. No statement will be needed. Yeah, I hope that is right. I hope you are right. Well, that kind of leads into my next thing. <laughs> In a 56-game season, Austin Matthews wins the Rocket Richard Trophy for most goals in the NHL this year. Whether it's 35, I, I don't know what in 56 games what would be top. Yeah. I think Austin Matthews wins the Rocket Richard this year. I think it's possible. I'm not going to say for sure because it's going to be so look weird. At, like It's going to be weird, but look at the goalies he gets to face all year. Yeah, he never okay. has to. He never has to face Vasilevsky. He never has to face Tuka Rask. Yeah, he has got a good lineup of goalies to fill the net. No, I I think it's very possible that he does win the Rocket and he does lead the league in uh, with goals scored by yeah. the by. The that end is of the my season. prediction. I, 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 I think, think that's Austin Matthews wins the Rocket Richard. I think that's very possible. Very possible. With how many goals, I don't know. Like it well, could, honestly, it could be like thirty. Pa- past, you can take Pasternak out of the equation. He's going to miss, miss a month or mo- a month and a half, so he's out. So it's basically it's probably going to be even Obi if Pasternak was in. Marshawn's not playing, right? Not to start. Not to so start without his two line mates. I don't think Pas like like you say. Matthews could do it with whoever he's playing with. Yeah. I think Pasternak needs Bergeron and Marshawn. Yeah, I think so too. And so so you're if you take like last year's like the three that would have been right going down to it, you take Pasternak out and it's Austin and it's Ovi. Ovi. But does someone else sneak in there? Like does McDavid have like a, or or McKinnon? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 
like someone else could sneak in, but I think they it's could. very, it's very possible. Very likely, it's likely. I think that. But Matthews... just remember, Austin hasn't even hit his peak yet, so no, he's coming. In, he's coming in this year stronger and faster than he's ever been. I, I'm no, just that's saying, a good. That's a it good might prediction. not happen, but my prediction: Austin Matthews wins the Rock of Richard. Maybe the first Leaf. I can't remember the last Leaf that won the Rock of Richard. Oh God, not in our lifetime. It, yeah, I if don't know if ever, it's ever. I don't know if it's ever happened. I don't know. Anyway, what's your next prediction? Anyway, well, you know what? Like, I got a couple different ways I could go here. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I, I'm gonna kind of combine these two into one. Okay, I'm gonna go with Simmons and Thornton on this in particular. Okay, I'm gonna combine these two into one. Joe Thornton will spend more time on the top two lines this season than on the third or fourth line, and. In combination with that, Joe Thornton and Wayne Simmons will both finish with more individual points than Corey Perry. Hmm, interesting. Why the shot at Corey Perry? Well, because he signed with the Montreal Canadiens. There was rumors <laughs> that he was interested in playing for the Leafs, but I think the Leafs kind of didn't feel like he might be the best guy to bring in the room. I think Simmons and if I had to choose personally between Simmons and, and Thornton or Perry, I, I know which, I know which two I'm taking. Yeah. It's not, and it's not Corey Perry. All right. That's a good prediction. Hopefully it comes true. Now, well, what do you, what do you, what do you think of that? We're going to do a couple. Well, I think, yeah, I think that's going to happen. If, if Perry, if Perry, you think that both Simmons and Thornton will finish with more individual points than Corey Perry. Yeah, because I think Toronto... They're going to be playing with better players. I think Toronto will score more goals than Montreal. Yeah. So if that's the case, then Simmons and Thornton have a better chance of having more points. Okay. Now, I don't know what Corey Perry's role is going to be. Like Maybe it doesn't pan out in Montreal. Maybe he goes up into the press box. But I will tell you this. Joe Thornton and Simmons will play on this team. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. My next prediction. You might think this is crazy because... You were going off about Lettinen. Rasmus Sandin plays Travis Dermott out of the lineup. Very likely, I think. Very likely. Yeah, I think he's a better defenseman. I think he's overall a better player. Let me just say that. I so think by the end of the year, he'll be in the starting lineup. Dermott will be in the taxi squad. I think it's very likely. Sandin is smart, man. Not that Dermott isn't, but... Dermot kind of can run around out there a little bit, and he's not making the best decisions. Sandine, I think he's got more. Like I think because Muzzin, actually... Muzzin and Riley aren't going anywhere on the no. left side. No, no, I will agree with that because I think Sandine's hockey IQ is higher than Dermot's. That's my personal opinion. Right. A lot of people might not agree with that, but we'll I think San... I think San... these predictions actually come I, true. By I the think end. I think Sandine is a special player. You, in fact, you know what he reminds me of? He reminds like when they drafted Morgan Riley, and Riley was coming in as a young kid, and it took him a while to get to where he's at. That's what signed Sandine reminds me of right now. A young Morgan Riley. I've never thought that one time about Travis Dermott. Stay, staying on the D, then I'll, I'll go here. I'll go here. The Leafs will play the best team defense we have seen them play in a long time, possibly ever, maybe even producing a Norris nominee or a Norris winner. Keep that. Keep in mind with that, that when Giordano won his Norris trophy, he played alongside TJ Brody. You cannot like expel the, like partner that plays with the guy who wins the Norris trophy. We are pretty sure Brody's going to be playing with Riley and uh, you know, basically TJ Brody and Bogosian, exactly what the doctor ordered for this team. Does Morgan Riley have a year that could be nominated or win a Norris trophy? I how, like it. How how much better will Brody make did. will how much better will Brody make Morgan Riley? It remains to be seen, but I think it could okay. be a lot better. Do you know what Morgan Riley reminds me of? Is Matt Sundin in the sense that we never give him a good partner. You remember when Matt Sundin was here and he oh, had like Hoagland. Jonas Hoagland and Michael Renberg and yeah. the best year of Matt Sundin's career, Gary Roberts and Alexander McGilney. And then 
that line dominated and Matt Sundin looked like a superstar in the league. Yeah, maybe because he wasn't carrying two dead weights down the ice. Yeah, no like doubt. nothing wrong with Ron Hainsey. I think Hainsey taught Riley a lot. Helped him a lot. Helped him a lot. He but, let him do he let him do his thing. But Hainsey wasn't like a TJ Brody, somebody who's gonna be a real partner, someone like a one A and a one B. Yeah. It was like dad and son. That's what Hainsey and, and yeah. Riley were. Yeah. This is the first partner Riley has had. And I think you're right. You have to compare, like, you cannot look at the guy who wins the Norris and not look at the person he played with all year. So if, if TJ Brody lives up to the hype, why not? Why couldn't Morgan? I know a lot of people listening that aren't Leaf fans are going to laugh at that, that we think Riley could win the Norris, but let's see. He, two, he, two years ago, he was finished fourth in votes. Fourth. Yeah. And he was two, two years ago. That's not that long ago. Was that with Hainsey as his partner? It was. Let's and see. in injury prone last season, playing last with year he had Cody CC. I know, and he was injury prone a lot. Like he was injured last season. He he didn't look healthy from the beginning. And like, yeah, Cody CC. I mean, PJ Brody. Like it's a no. We'll see. But could it happen? Like you know, you got Hedberg out there, and like there's some top guys around. But like. You know, how is Petrangelo going to play in Vegas? And like, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I, this is it for me. Well, hang on. If it's about, a, if it's about the cup, don't do it yet. No, no. That's my number one. Okay. The Buffalo Sabres will win the East. <laughs> the Buffalo Sabres. No, no, no. Come on. This is well, Leafs. This is Leafs. The Le- Buffalo Sabres will go 56 and 0. Sheldon Keefe <laughs> will run a power play with five forwards. At some point during this year, Sheldon Keefe will do a power play with five forwards, all on the ice at one time. So you yeah, have like a like, Hyman at the point. Who? Okay. Well, I would. I wouldn't have Hyman at the point. I would okay, have him Marner in, at the point. Mar, Marner at the point. One hundred percent. Marner at the Hyman point. in front of the net. Thornton setting up. So Thornton takes Marner's spot as the setup man, and then Matthews and Nylander. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. That's why I, I thought it was kind of a stupid prediction, but I'm like, no, I bet I Keith, I bet Keith tries he tried, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. But I, Marner would be the only guy that I would have. Like, back didn't you say the, the he point. was thinking about trying 3D? 3D and two forwards. He still might. He still might. So he may try he something. He could be. Yeah, he could try some crazy shit. He'd Who knows? I, I, I like that prediction. I think it's very possible that you could see a, a five forward power play. Okay does doesn't make a ton of sense because it's a shortened season so it it doesn't make i guess a ton of sense to make this as a prediction but i'll say it anyway freddie anderson will play the least amount of games he's ever played not because it's a shortened season but he will play the least amount of games he's ever played since becoming a leaf meaning it will be closer to like a 50-50 split with campbell and less of like a 70 30 split or whatever. Like, so it would be 28 games for, for Freddie, 28 games for, for Jack, or 30 games for Fred and 26 games for, for, yeah, for Jack. I could see, I could totally see that happening, especially is that, with the is schedule that crazy as or? condensed it is. When, when you're playing every other night, like that's can't be that crazy, right? Okay. Hutchinson, it's not like Hutch would like cheat you on effort. Hutch just to me wasn't, didn't get a lot of help and like he just, didn't really have timing wise to make the big save. Hutch when isn't I, Hutch isn't the starting goalie. But Campbell is like whenever Campbell was in, I was like, well, they like they can win that. They're going to win this game. Oh yeah, like, Campbell Campbell's. You feel safe with. Campbell. He's going to give you the save. He's going to give you. He's going to give you the yeah. save when Campbell's in there. That's how he's I not do. as big as Freddie, but he'll give you the save. Seems like he's got a lot of heart, and he just keeps going. Like no matter what, I, I like I like Jack Campbell a lot. That's what she said. I have one more, but okay, you do that, and then I got my number one. Okay, well, this is it. This is it. I'm not going to say the obvious what people think I might say. I'm just going to say this instead. Will a Canadian team be in the 2021 Stanley Cup final? I'm not saying what team, although we already said who we think will win the <laughs> North Division. <laughs> so but will kinda... will a Canadian team be in the 2021? St- we know a Canadian team is going to be in the final four. There will be four teams remaining, and one of them will be a Canadian team. Will a Canadian team be in the 2021 Stanley Cup final, Chad? Yes or no? Yes, because my number one pick, my number one prediction 
is the Toronto Maple Leafs will win the 2021 Stanley Cup. It's over. Go home. That's my prediction. Dale just stood up. Yes, if you're, yes, if you're listening yes. on the podcast, he just yes. threw his headphones and stood up. The prediction of all predictions. The prediction is in. Wow. I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not going to say, oh, well, you know what? Washington has a great team or Tampa has a great team. You know what? Toronto has a great fucking team. Toronto has a great fucking team. Toronto has a great fucking goalie. Toronto has great fucking goal scorers. Toronto has great fucking leadership. Toronto has good fucking defense this year. So you know what? The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to win the Stanley Cup. Toronto? Buffalo? Well, Buffalo may give them a run for their money in the (laughs) final. It'll be Toronto, Buffalo in the final. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, fair. Hey, man, I love it. I love it. Why not? Like, why not this year? It's going to be incredible. The North Division, all Canadian. It's going to be incredible. We're going to see what the Leafs are really all about here. I love I love it. I love it. I love the prediction. Love it. Yeah, Love it. We, as Leaf fans, we got to stop like apologizing. Oh, fuck the apologizing. I think the Leafs are going to. Okay. If you Best... think the Leafs team, if you compare this Leafs team on paper to any other team in the league, you cannot tell me they don't have a chance in a seven game series against any of them, any oh. team in the league. 100%. 100%. So that's my prediction. Oh, I love it. I love it. Leafs are going to win the cup. I fucking hope so, man. You heard it here. The Tip in Maple Leafs podcast, January 3rd, 2021. And I'll even go further. I'll even go further and give you this. Overtime, last game of the cup. Oh, man. Joe Thornton tips it in to win the cup. That would be like, (laughs) no. We'd probably, to... we'd just die. We'd fucking oh, die. I would we'd... have to jump off the roof, man. I yeah. wouldn't know what to do. That's I wouldn't it. Know I've, do. You've hit the highlight of your life. No, that's it's it. all downhill from here. Yeah, that, that would be the end of it. Joe Thornton tips in the fucking. Anyway, for the Tramp Tram- Maple Leafs podcast. Camp, oh, camp, camp opens within, a, I don't know, it's January 3rd now. I think so you said opens. Tramp. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> You're going to say training camp. Training camp. And you combined it into Tramp. That's right. Anyway, training camp opens tomorrow. Leafs first Today, game now. Jan- oh yeah, it's midnight. Leafs first game January thirteenth against Montreal Canadiens. We have no idea what time, but some at some time that day. Probably seven. Probably seven o'clock. Uh, for the Tippet Maple Leafs podcast, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Tippet Maple Leafs podcast. On Twitter at the Tippet Podcast. Hit up our YouTube channel at the Tippet Maple Leafs podcast. Hit like. Hit subscribe. Also ring the bell so that you get notified every time we post a video. Hit up our website tippetsportsmedia.com. Pick up a T-shirt. The money goes back into the podcast. Email us at the Tippet Podcast at gmail.com. And until next time, keep fit and have fun. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. And we will catch you later.